When you talk about passion, iba-iba yung passion ng tao. Okay? Maybe may iba art, iba books, iba sports. Kami, kami dito sa Victory, may passion din kami. May sinubukan din kami. Okay, we were passionately trying to run. Okay? Tinry namin yung mga, yung mga running, running. Yan, okay? Gumawa pa kami ng club dito sa Green Hills. Victory Green Hills Running Club. Di ba? Tinan mo yung mga members niya. Yan, andyan sila Randall, andyan sila uh, Pastor Dennis, andyan sila Val, sumali ko ba dyan? Andyan sila Dodge, tumatakbo kami niyan. And then, we, we dito, around, around Green Hills, may objective ba kami? When we run, we're gonna start engaging people. Dumami ng dumami, dumami ng dumami, kumonti ng kumonti, kumonti ng kumonti, hanggang wala na pong Green Hills, Victory Green Hills Running Club. Okay? It was, it was passion. What I'm saying here is that at times, passion can be overrated. Diba? We hear passion everywhere. You, you open the internet, turn on the internet, punta ka sa ibang blog site, it will talk about passion. They have passion for music, passion for art, passion everywhere. Here, here are different quotes about passion. Albert Einstein, di ba? E, e equals MC square. He's a theoretical physicist. And sabi niya, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. Hindi daw siya matalino. Wala daw siyang talent. Okay? Cur- passionately curious lang daw siya. Tanong lang siya ng tanong. Tanong lang siya ng tanong. He won't stop until he gets the answer. Kaya na nakuha yung E equals MC square. Guess what? Until now, I don't get the E equals MC square. Why? I'm not passionate about it. Okay? George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. German, German philosopher, sabi niya, nothing great in the world has been accomplished without passion. So sinabi niya, hindi ka magiging successful if you're not passion, If you're not passionate. Guess what? Ginamit ko sarili ko yan. Uh, since since early, next, early last week, I learned that I'm going to be preaching today. So I'm passionate. I'm passionate to preach God's word. And guess what? I think it's very effective. Why? Because now, I, I did not just say it, but I profess that I am going to be used by God to bring success to the preaching today. Not me, but by God. So, you can be passionate talaga. This is my favorite quotation about passion. John Wesley, he's a Christian theologian. Sabi niya, when you set yourself on fire, people love to come and see you burn. Di ba? Okay ba yan? That's, that's passion there. Na- naalala niyo ba yung, nakarinig niyo ba yung quotation about yung, you're so on fire because you're so passionate. Dun galing yun. Kay John Wesley. That literally, he would, he was okay. I'll set myself on fire para lang makita ng tao how passionate I am to God. So what is passion? Passion is an intense desire or enthusiasm for something. Intense desire. Hindi lang ordinary desire. Hindi lang wish ko lang. Hindi lang. It's an intense desire. Ito mga passion ko. Okay. Show the picture. Show the first picture, please. Yan. I love to cook. I love to cook. I want to thank kung andito sila, Uncle Johnny, sila Kay for the apron from Clara Ole. May plugging pa, eh, no? I love to cook. It's one of my, I, my, my wife knows this. There are times that the, when I go home, there's medyo stress ako or marami ako inisip, I'll tell her, I'll cook. Because I want, I love to cook. He, I, would, I don't only cook from the cookbook, pero kahit ano, basta tatry ko. Magluluto lang ako. And then one of, another passion of mine is, of course, when you love to cook, you love to, you love to eat. Okay, I I can't forget this buffet. This was in uh, Excalibur Hotel, sa uh, sa Las Vegas. Grabe yung grabe yan. Uh, Spirals, low yung spirals. It, ibang iba, ibang level to. I love to eat. Next is I love to travel. Okay, nakita niyo yon, di ba? Medyo dwarf yung leaning tower ng, of pizza dyan, di ba? Hindi ho sa Europe yan. I've never been to Europe. Lord bless me. I want to go to Europe, okay? Uh, it, this was in Taiwan. It, it, it's what, it was in one of our um, latest trip. Now, we went to Taiwan. Meron siya miniature park, miniature things in our world. Then, I love my family. I love it when my family is together. You know, awfully, oftentimes, walang, w- walang kasama. Wala kami ibang kasama. When we travel, kami lang. Tapos walang masyadong tumatawag ng sa cellphone, hindi ko masyadong sinasagot yung phone kasi ang mahal ng bill, di ba, pag, pag overseas. So solo ko lang, solo ko family. I, I'm very passionate with my family and I'm very passionate with cars. Okay? Monty, my second son, we love going to transport show. Yung mga trans show, pupuntahan namin yan. And then I remember he was only two years old, umiyak siya palabas ng car show. Sabi ko, why are you crying? I want to buy a car. Sabi ko, anak. 
we can only afford this magazine. Okay? Next time na yung car. But I want to buy a car. Hindi kami pumunta ng, ng, ng car show ng mga three years, four years, hanggang naintindihan niya na pupunta lang kami doon para mag-picture and take, uh, and take home some souvenirs. I remember hearing from someone saying that what you're passionate about daw, kung ano yung passion mo, yun yung nagpapaiyak rin sa'yo. Have you heard that before? Di ba? Kung wala naman si Dennis, wala naman si Tami, pwede na, okay? Uh, si Tami. Si Tami is one of the people that I see so passionate when it comes to eating. Okay? There was one time we were in, we were in the buffet. Napaghahalata, no? Puro buffet yung kwento, no? Anyway, hindi naman siguro obvious, but uh, when, when, we, when we were walking, sabi niya, nasaan si Dennis? Sabi ko, Tami, ba't ka kinikilig? Kasi may nakita akong favorite kong food. Natawa talaga ako. Talagang kilig na kilig siya. Si Laika naman, you know Laika, our kid church admin, siya rin. Isang beses lumapit sa akin, tapos pumapalakpak siya. Sabi ko, bakit ka pumapalakpak? Ang sarap nung cake. Ang sarap nung cake. Yun yung passion. They're so passionate. Okay, ibubukin ko naman yung sarili ko. When I, when I pursued my wife, I was so passionate. Okay? I was passionately pursuing her. Uh, Noah, close your ears. Jello, Monte. Okay. I was really passionately pursuing her. She, during summer days, she would, she would travel to Laguna. They have a summer home in Laguna. And my business sila doon na supermarket. So, so, so one doon sila. Eh, yung nililigawan ko siya, summer. So, talagang bumabiyahay ako. 40 to 50 kilometers every day just to be with her. Back and forth yun, from Binondo to Binyan, Binyan to Binondo. Drive lang ako. That's how I passionately pursued her. Tapos yung mga gusto niya, alam ko gusto niya Ferrero na chocolates. Bili ako. Maski natitira na lang sa, sa bulsa ko, eksakto na lang pampauwi ng, pampa ng Manila. Pati tol, di ba? Gasolina. Bibili pa rin ako. Tapos, oh, yung mga singles. Nasa yung mga singles? Can you raise your hands? Oh, subukan niyo to. Nag-work sa akin. Hindi ko lang sa inyo. Okay, mag-work. Uh, pag nagpapadala ako ng love letter, kasi passionate nga, di ba? Inisprayhan ko pa ng pabango. Di ba? O, ginawa nyo, no? Naalala ko yung pabango ko noon, drug car, di ba? Pang letter lang yun, di ba? And then, naku, yung anak ko nakikinig sa akin. Anyway, <laughs> and yun ang passion. Hatid sundo yan. Every day I would pick her up and then drive her home. That's passion. But what Nehemiah had was more than passion. Yung akin, passion, but if I stop pursuing them, it won't change much the world. People won't mind. If I stop eating, I think it will even do me better. I would, I would lose weight. If I stop traveling, sa tingin ko matutubad na yung gusto na asawa ko na makaipon kami na mas malaki. Buti na lang, I didn't stop pursuing my beautiful wife kasi tinan mo, nakajack pa tayo, di ba? Sige, at siya, balik ko ulit sa gitna. Okay. But what Nehemiah had was a divine agenda. Divine agenda, it's more than just passion. Divine agenda is something na, something, alam mo burn, may burning sensation inside of you that you, sometimes we call it as burden. Some people think na, di ba, parang naalala ko, some of my, our friends would call, yeah, yun yun yata yung calling ko. When I talk to people in business, parang yun yung calling ko. A divine agenda is a God-given vision. It's a God-given vision. There's two kinds of um, divine agenda. First one is personal for your own self. And yung isa is corporate. Why? Bakit corporate? Ano yung sabihin ng corporate? For everyone. Why do we have a divine agenda that's for everyone? Because we belong in a spiritual family. You and I, we belong in a spiritual family. That's why meron din tayong corporate na, na divine agenda. We were, I was fortunate to, to, to talk to some ministry leaders of ours last night, and, I, and oh, yesterday, and I talked to them, and I asked them, we asked them, Sami, Sige, what are your divine agenda? We told them about our preaching. Ching Kitan said that his divine agenda is to teach people the value of money, to be good steward of money, and for people to be debt-free. Diba? Nakita mo yung books niya, talks niya, pananamit niya, lahat. It's about really telling them, earn money, save money, be good steward of money, and then get out of debt. Puro ganyan lang pagchingkitan. Jun Gomez. Jun Gomez is a contractor. Uh, one who builds a house. Okay, hindi ako nagpadala ng picture. Sorry, Jun. 
His divine agenda is to disciple men to be leaders in their home. Kung contractor siya, gusto naman niya ngayon is mag-build ng home through the men, through the leaders, through the men that he is discipling. Yun yung, yun yung burden naman sa kanya. Yun yung divine agenda niya. Next is Bonnie de Jesus. Tito Bonnie, his divine agenda, galing to, sabi niya is to educate, empower, and mentor men in the workplace. And to tell them that God has a purpose in them that they will succeed. They will never fail if they know that God is with them. Galing, di ba? So that's his, that's his divine agenda. Think about yourself. Napag-isipan niyo na ba ito? Napag-isipan I know all of us has passion. We've talked about purpose, God's purpose in our lives so many times. But is there a nagging thing inside of you na sinasabi mo, Hey, you know what? I think you're right. I think I have this burden or calling or divine agenda that God has put inside of me. Let's look at uh, what Nehemiah has written and what transpired actually in his life. Before, before that, I'll give you a context before I read the, the first, few chap, uh, first few verses. Nehemiah lived in the time, 440 BC, na separated yung Israel. It was separated in northern and southern. Si ang southern was controlled by the Persian army, Persian kingdom. And, and, um, and the context was that Jerusalem was torn down. This was actually, hindi lang the first time that it was torn down. This was actually the third time that it was torn down. Since Nebuchadnezzar, Ezra, hanggang kay Nehemiah, they were trying to build it up, get broken, build it again, get broken. Ganun nangyari. Nehemiah was like an o- OFW. Okay? He was working, not actually in Jerusalem, but he was working outside. He was a cupbearer. Alam niyo anong, anong, anong cupbearer? Tumantawa si Monty dito, my second son, kasi he, na, napanood niya sa National Geographic about, um, about the president, President Noy Noy, wherever he goes around, meron tagatikim. Okay? Meron siyang tagatikim talaga. Titik man yung soup, titik man yung iinom ng tubig and everything. And, and Nehemiah was just like that. He was a cupbearer. Siya yung Hindi ko, nga, hindi ko nga alam kung, kung ano no, kung medyo honor, honoring ba yung job niya. Kasi katabi mo yung king palagi, kung ano kinakain ng king, yun yung kinakain mo. Pero kung may lason yun, una ka. Di ba? Una ka sa kanya. He was a cupbearer. And Nehemiah was like an OFW. He was working in Persia, but his heart was still with the people, his people. He was a Jew. And his people was in Jerusalem. His, and his heart was in Jerusalem. Let's turn our Bibles to Nehemiah 1, verse 1 to 3. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakele, in the month of Kislev, in the 28th year, while I was in citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province, are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned Burned, burned with fire. Sunog even the place. Even the temple of God was in rumbles. Okay? Two million people live in Jerusalem then. But since they were exiled, ang bumalik na lang 50,000. 2%. 2% lang ang, ang kumbaga, naglakas ng loob bumalik. So Nehemiah, Nehemiah was asking a messenger. Di ba? Tinanong niya sa messenger, what dawned, what dawned on me in the first two, first two verses is that Yung divine agenda mo pala can come anytime. And it can come anywhere. There's no appointed time for us to get our divine agenda. You might get your divine agenda now through God's word for me. Or you can, it can happen actually when you go home, when you're showering, when you go to the bathroom, when you're doing supermarket. It can, it, it can happen anywhere. It can happen at Examples in the Bible. Noah. Noah was asked to make the ark. And yung binigay sa kanya yung divine agenda niya to build the ark, wala hong ulan nun. Drought yung season na nun. And guess what? They weren't even along the shoreline. They were near a valley. Walang body of water. Yet he was called Moses. It's Moses nagpapastol. And then he saw the burning bush. And then he was called. Guess what? Yung age niya. Parang sabi mo, pwede... Kung si Moses lang, medyo pilosopo, sabi niya kay God, God, ang tanda ko na, tapos ngayon mo pa ako tinawag, bakit hindi before? Here's another guy, David. My favorite ng Bible is David. Yung appointed time niya, yung divine 
agenda niya nangyari when he was asked to bring snacks, cheese to his brother. And bata pa siya. Bata pa siya yung tinawag siya ni God. Bata pa siya yung binigay ni God, yung divine agenda niya. And magdadala lang siya ng cheese. It can happen anytime. It can happen to young people, to old people. So each one of you is important in God's eye. You cannot say that, Pastor, I'm already 65 years old. Wala na, medyo patapos na ako. No, 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 no. God would use you. Bata naman. I've, I've heard this a lot of time in, in kids' church. Lapit sila. I'm still too young. What do you want me to do? No, 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 no. God will use you even though you're at that age. God would use everyone and anyone as long as you're available. Okay, balik tayo kay Nehemiah. Nabalitaan ni Nehemiah that. And when you get your divine agenda, it will change you. You will never be the same again. Like me, I sincerely, and uh, hindi word is sincerely, I know that I'm called to be a pastor. It was validated not only be, between me and my wife through, through the word of God, but pastors around me and even the apostolic team who, who talked to me and told me that I have a calling to become a pastor. You know, in kids' church, para sabi ko, ito na, ito na talaga yung calling ko. This is my divine agenda. But another agenda came up. You see, in kids' church, what we do is whatever it takes, we would change the world. We are world changers. Whatever it do, one child at a time. When, when you know me, when you get to sit with me and talk to me about my passion with the children, palagi ako niloloko ni Tammy, asawa ni Pastor Dennis, my wife, and even si Laika, palagi nila niloloko, palagi daw nagiging watery yung eye ko. Palagi daw nagpapawis-pawis daw. Kasi ganun ako ka-passion when I talk about children. And, and there are times that I even spend an hour crying just to petition the next generation and pray to God. Then, my divine agenda came. When somebody approached me and asked me to join her cause, it was a very noble cause, to change the world now. Sabi ko, but I've been changing the world. I do it here in Kids Church. Send them here. We have an excellent service. But then she called me and showed me the plight of the kids out there. She showed me pictures. She, she, she told me stories about children na every day pumupunta sa Jollibee pero hindi nakakatikim ng Chicken Joy. Sabi ko, every day nagja Jollibee, hindi nakakatikim ng Chicken Joy. Yes. Sa mga pastor, they just go there. They only have five pesos. What do they do with five pesos? They buy the gravy, pour the gravy on their rice, and eat it. Yun yung pagkain nila every day. After hearing those stories, there was really something inside of me that crushed me and moved me to action. I'm so thankful that I'm so blessed that I have a wife who feels that same way too. Yung passion niya ganun rin. And I was asked to join, to, to join that foundation. And now I'm a member. And I know that we are making a dent here in the city of San Juan. There in Cagayan de Oro. Maybe not yet the whole Philippines, but watch us because we're going to make that then. Don't get me wrong. My divine agenda, kasi yung iba nakatingin, oh, so hindi ka lang pastor, meron ka ibang racket. My divine agenda is not, is not right start. My divine agenda is not the foundation. What my divine agenda is, is to preach the gospel to every child, whether inside this church, the four walls of this church, or out there on the street. That's why I joined that foundation, is they're going to build centers in community nationwide, barangay at a time, that I will be given a platform to go there and preach the gospel. Because I know that my divine agenda is tell them that hope is only in Christ. Okay, let's give God praise. Kaya sa 2016, wag niyong kalilimutan, Larry Uy, ang pag-asa ng bayan. Parang humina yung palakpak dun. Ha? Sabi ni Dennis, wag mo na ulitin pag hindi lumipad. Okay? One of my divine agenda is to be a loving leader. Loving leader to my wife, loving leader to my, 
two boys and loving leader to Lara, loving, loving son to my family. That is one passion that I, that I will say that I will not even share to everyone. Hindi ko ipaghahati, pagdadamutan ko yun. Why? Because God has called me to lead this family. God has called me to raise up a family that would eventually glorify Him through all eternity. That's when you know your divine agenda, you would know that there's an eternal element in it. May nakadikit na would really make a change. Maybe not now, but in generations to come. Let's see how, how passionate div, uh, the divine agenda of Nehemiah is. Nehemiah 1, verse 4. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. He wept. Pareho lang pala siya sa akin. For some days, I mourned and fasted. Hindi yata ako nagfast. And prayed before the God of heaven. Ganun siya. Ganun siya na stir up. What happened there? One first thing that we can learn from Nehemiah, divine agenda awakens compassion. It awakens compassion. Kung kanina pinag-usapan natin yung passion, it's being enthusiastic in something. Compassion, ibang, ibang klase. Compassion means to suffer with. To suffer with. Parang kanina, di ba? Parang kanina, Pastor, ang ganda nung, ano, ang ganda nung, nung, nung definition ng, ng passion. It, enthusiastic, to be enthusiastic, di ba? But to desire more enthusiasm, intense enthusiasm, bakit dito iba? There are times that we have watered down the definition of a word. But compassion means to commune. Com is to commune. And passion is to suffer with. If you love somebody, if you're so passionate with someone, you would even suffer with him or with her. Iiwanan mo ba? Pag sabi mo, okay, uh, okay, parang hindi na happy yung marriage natin. Bye, see ya. That's not suffering with. You don't have compassion. You only have passion. But if you have compassion, the genuine love, you would even through thick or thin, ano ba yan? for richer, for poorer, till death do us part. You would do that. It's to suffer with. See, Nehemiah, iniyakan niya. It made him weep. The Bible's telling us here that more than passion, Nehemiah's heart is for the Jewish people. A, div- a divine agenda came upon Nehemiah. He knew all along how his people were redeemed. Hindi mo ba, parang sabi ni Nehemiah, hindi nyo ba na gets? Three times kayo umalis, three times kayo pina-exile, pinapunta ng Egypt, ginawa kayong slave. God bought you back, God bought you back, and then put you back to your place. Two million kayo, naging 50,000 lang kayo. What can't you get? He got the heart of Jesus. Sorry, God pa din. Wala pa si Jesus. But he knew that Jesus would come and redeem that people. The question now for you and I, do you know what God's heart is? Do you ask in your own self, Lord, break mo yung heart ko. When we were singing that song a while ago, I just broke down. Why? Because I pray that every day. Lord, before I preach, before I counsel, before I open the Bible, Lord, can you please break my heart to what really break yours? Para hindi agenda ko. Para hindi, para hindi ako. Kasi pwede nagpe-pray ako. Lord, pag pray ko to, ako, ako, ako. But Lord, break my heart to what really break yours. Before Nehemiah pick up one brick to build the wall, yun yung ginawa niya eh. He was asked to build the wall. Why was the wall important? Sa chapter 3, sa third day natin itong series, we were going to tell you about the wall. But he was asked to do that. Yung mga bata sa children's church, tuwan-tuwa sila noon. Pag gumagawa kami ng phone, ni Himaya uh, built the wall, then higher and higher and higher. But for us, what was that wall? Before he built the wall, he built the heart of the people first. He asked to break his heart for him, for him to start building that wall. He felt what, what was in God's heart, his heart was broken over the wall. Compassion. This week, nagkalat ang news about Secretary Robredo. Okay? Secretary Robredo, I believe, is a good man. I cannot say that he is perfect. Okay? But why the overwhelming response of the people around him? You know why? He showed compassion. Genuine compassion. A lot of people came up to me, but do you know that he did this, he did that? I go, I don't care. But the masa, the people know what he did. And he did it in his own way. 
He didn't, we're not saying the glorify Secretary Robredo here. But we're, what we're saying is that if one person can spark a revolution like that, how not to dream that each one of us here can spark that same revolution? I was so amazed. I was so amazed that ordinary people, a, a, a barangay captain started, started printing t-shirts for free. Pwede ka magdala ng t-shirt, magsisilk screen nila for free. And then the, the reporter asked him, why do you do that? Just a simple memory. Na sana hindi makalimutan ng tao na each one of us na nabigyan ko nitong, nitong t-shirt nito, you can effect change. Look at the one beside you, left and right. Tell him or her, actually, that's you. You can affect change. If each one of us would just use just the story, wag na natin, wag, wag na natin kalkalin ano yung background ni Robredo, bakit hindi siya, hindi siya na-confirm ng, uh, ng cyanate. But why? Why that, why that genuine love of the people that made him a hero? Actually, he died in a plane crash. Hindi naman siya in-assassinate. Hindi siya, he died in a plane crash. But the story, even the story there, you would see how a family man he is. He was already booked in a flight, Cebu Pacific. May ticket na siya. But he wants to be there for his, for his daughter. So he took, he took the private airplane. He was a family man. Even there, you can learn. There are times that us, we are so adjusted with, 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 with all the news, with all the, everything in the world, that there are times that we, we are clouded. But when the divine agenda is there, divine agenda in each one of us that awakens our compassion, you should ask the Holy Spirit to guide you because grace would be there. Grace would be evident. What puts a thug in your heart? Ano ba yung pag nakita mo? Ano ba yung pag nabalitaan mo? Parang kinukurot yung puso mo. Ano ba yung pag narinig mo lang parang sa news, tapos sabi mo, dinudurog yung puso mo. What brings out your passion that would make a dent in the universe? What is that something that would have eternal value? Like your family. What is that something that you would do and only you could do that have eternal value? Let's move our Bibles to, uh, turn our Bibles to chapter, uh, to verse 5. Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, this is Nehemiah, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love when those who love him and obey his commands. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins. We Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. Verse 7, we have acted very wickedly, wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even your exiled people are at the farthest horizon. I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. A divine agenda sets the direction. That's a point number two. Ang ganda. Sa middle, sa middle ng uh, verses, in verse 6, 7, and 8. But first, in the uh, verse, verse 5, he sets the direction there. Alam niya na si God is God. Alam niya na God is the creator. That God, he owes everything to God. He knows that he is nothing without God. He sets the direction already. That all glory has to go back to him. Ang maganda doon sa middle is what he's talking about. That he even asked to be forgiven. Siya pa yung nag-sorry. Sinama niya yung pit sarili niya dun sa prayer ng mga tao, ng mga Jews. There are times that us, when we're praying for, for other people, we thought we're praying, but we are kind of self-righteous. Parang, Lord, sige na, pagbigyan mo na sila kasi ganito sila, ganito sila. That's not prayer. That's actually whining. What we should do is when we ask God, we know what's His position, we know where, are, where we are with Him, we know our relationship with Him, and then we ask, we ask. We ask for forgiveness. We repent with them. Now, when you get your divine agenda, you have to be in check. Do you have that relationship with God? What's your motivation in doing your passion? 
para ba mag-glorify si God or maging sikat ka? Nehemiah, when he prayed, he was pointing it back to God. God act in behalf of God and not us. God, He acts in behalf of God and not actually for us. I have a confession. Um, growing up, I was already medyo ano, civic-minded na ako. I love charity works, I love the poor, and, 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 I would, and I would help. But my confession is that I would do it because of my own motive. I have my own agenda. Gusto ko rin maging sikat, di ba? And, and, and growing up, my grandfather, before he passed away, he was part of an association. It's a Chinese, this is, this, is, this is like a norm that we have association that would help the poor. How can you not like that? It's social transformation. You want to uplift the lives of the poor. So, nakita ko siya, sumasama ako sa kanya. Yung, mo, ang selfish talaga ng motives ko. Sumasama ako kasi may pagkain pag nag-meeting sila, di ba? Medyo laureate yun, no? daming course. No? So, sumasama ako. And, and when you go to that association, you will see around the, around the walls are pictures of the members. May pictures sila nakahang. Okay? So, uh, when my grandfather passed away, when he passed away, sabi ko, now's my turn. Kasi yung daddy ko mahiyain. Actually, ko daddy ko andyan. Oh, nagtago pa yata kasi mahiyain eh. But then, dad ko mahiyain. So kung ni dad ko mahiyain, alam niya na kung kanino ako nagmana, no? Okay? Hindi, mommy, I love you. Okay, peace. Mahiyain dad ko. So sabi ko, it's my turn. Ko, what a legacy. The youngest to be put up there on that, on, on that wall. Picture ko nakalagay doon. Inimagine ko na yun. Imagine, it was for a self, very selfish motive. It was really just to be glorifying me. I know I didn't know God then. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that what they're doing is not right. But again, each one has your own direction. Each one has your own motive. In whatever you do, is it really set in the direction to glorify God or just to glorify yourself? As Christ followers, we have to understand that God is God. Okay? I want to repeat that again. God is God. When Jesus died on the cross, it was to save us. True. Diba? It was to save you and I because He loves us so. But you know what? Jesus was just obeying His Father. Jesus was fulfilling the wish of His Father for God, for us to be closer to Him. A divine agenda awakens our compassion to see the heart of God. Our divine agenda sets us to a direction. But compassion is not only spiritual. Compassion is not only emotional. There has to be a response. And my third point for uh, this afternoon is a divine agenda leads to action. Here's a story of two business people. Two business people, same passion, two business women. Yung isa tinanong, uh, what do you like about business? Why, why are you so passionate about business? Because I want to do business. So ni rephrase. Hindi nga, sabi na natin, ano, mayamang ka na, sobrang dami mo ng pera, hindi mo na kailangan magtrabaho. Why do you want to do business? Sagot niya, I want to do business. Inulit ulit, third time. Akala, akala namin, hindi niya nag-get eh. So tinanong namin, oh, so what, what, an ano yung sa business yun, yung gusto mo talaga gawin? It's business. Passionate na siya for business. That's, that's the reason. The other, the other person, the other woman, when, when she was asked, what, what are you, why are you so passionate with business? Because I want to earn money. Okay? So, pag money, wala nang, kumbaga wala nang, wala nang, marami ka ng pera. It's not, it's not an issue anymore. Why do you want to make, uh, to, to be in business? Sabi niya, so that I can earn enough and change the lives of each child at a time. Yun yung, yun yung lumabas sa kanya. Here, two people, two businesswomen, both passionate in what, you do, in the, what they do, but the other has passion. Yung other, divine agenda. Arlene C., Arlene C. is the executive director of Right Start. Together with her friends, Saleh, Annabelle, and Asel built a foundation for the underprivileged children called Right Start. Yung passion niya didn't just stop 
in crying, in helping, in giving, uh, giving to ano, vendors, asking people to go to McDonald's or to Jollibee to eat. Hindi yung Christmas may package sila. Hindi yung uh, sila yung pupunta sa bahay with baskets of uh, pail with rice. It didn't stop there. He, she knew that her divine agenda is to pick up one child at a time and make and set her for her destiny. Nakita niya in each child, there's a potential. Nakita niya in, 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 in each child, God has a purpose in them. Pwede kasing passion lang ang pagkawang gawa. Philanthropist's passion can be just the same as social reform, social transformation. They have the same goal, to uplift the lives of the society. But what set us apart, what sets Right Star apart, is that in doing so, pag nagpakain sila, hindi lang nila sinishare yung love, ni, ni, love and joy of Jesus, of the gospel, but they're teaching them that there's hope in Christ. Yun yung pagkakaiba. Yun yung divine agenda niya. Because if yung passion na pagpapakain, feeding program, reading, storytelling, uh, hygiene, uh, music, art, if it stops there, and then wala yung Jesus factor, it's just a passion. It would just be a passion. Her divine agenda is to make sure that in uplifting in every in uplifting every child's life, she and or he would see her potential in Christ. During Habagat, we saw a report of how we at church, corporately naman, nakuha natin yung divine agenda natin corporately. We help our we help uh, a lot of people. And the fourth, they yung relief goods na pinapak nila every day six thousand. 6,000 bags. Here in San Juan, we knew that seven barangays were, were, were baha sila lahat. That's why we helped. We didn't even think. The pastors, the pastors and some of the leaders, we just talked and then we just went to San Juan Arena and, and, and helped with Congressman JV. We helped. Why? Because we know that it was a, our divine agenda, corporately, to help our countrymen. Hindi yung, okay, uh, are you a church member? If you're a church member, we'll help you. No. Because we know that it was, we were called to do that. I was so impressed that I was really moved in tears when our kids' church team, uh, headed by Val and Mitch, wh- what they did on a Sunday, they asked their team members to skip lunch during, during the relief efforts. Usap sila, let's skip lunch. And then they started donating their lunch money, and they, they went to Unimart. They started buying relief goods. And they, uh, they pack relief goods. And, but they didn't stop there. You know, this really made me, made me cry. Because they even impressed upon the children the plight of the people out there. That they asked them to write notes, prayers. Even, nakalagay, yung isa, hindi ko makalabun na nakalagay lang, thank you ka lang kay Jesus. It was just as simple as that. Sharing God's love. Sharing gospel. It's not actually hard. You can do that from your chair. You don't, even to, you don't even have to come up here to share that love, to share the gospel. Nehemiah, he stake his posi- position in the kingdom, in the king's court. He put his neck on the line. He knew that together with his compassion, his resolve is to act on it. Kasi pag nag-react ka lang, pag nag-respond ka lang, pero wala kang action. Walang mangyayari. It has to lead to an action. Ephesians 2.10, ESV version. For we, as he, we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. For what? Everybody, for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Church, don't live a life as you please. You lost that right when Christ died on the cross. We lost our right when He died for us on the cross. We are tel- tailor-made, carefully crafted for a selected divine agenda. It is what you and I were created for. God's vision has an eternal element. We are ordained, saved, predestined, redeemed, prepared, equipped, and tasked to walk out our divine agenda. Kanya-kanya tayo. We are, we are saved, 
redeemed, prepared, and equipped. Nehemiah verse 1, chapter 1, verse 10. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. During Nehemiah's time, redeemed means here is that binili sila ni God, pinabalik sila dun sa, pinabalik sila sa Israel, they took them out of Egypt. For you and I now, now, our redemption was bought by Christ on the cross. Our redemption was when God decided to bring His Son here on earth and die for us on the cross. Mark 10, verse, uh, 45. For even the Son of Man, that's Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. Tayo yung binayaran. Tayo yung niransam. Si Jesus, yung buhay niya, yung dugo niya, yun yung ginamit na pambayad for each one of us. Why did He redeem us? Galatians 3.14 He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham, our father, might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Jesus paid the great price to redeem us. Nehemiah wept not because of the millions na ginastos, kasi nag sila. Hindi dahil doon sa mga nasayang. Alam niya, umiyak siya, dahil alam niya kung ano yung cost. Because God, what God did. You know why we do Victory Group? It's not for numbers. Because we know that in each life, in each life that we come across with, that we, that we can disciple, transformation happens. And nagiging, kumbaga yung nakikita namin, yung fruits, nung nangyari sa cross. It all goes back to the cross. It's never about us. It's always about what Jesus did on the cross. You know how Jesus lead? You know how Jesus took into action? He was God. He's up there in heaven. Sabi niya, pwede naman hindi na siya bumaba eh. But He did so. Why? Because He is not somebody that would just lead us with emotion or spiritual. He wants to save us, and that's his mission. Like a sheep without a shepherd. There are times we are the, tayo naman, on our part, sobrang desensitized na tayo. What do you mean desensitized? Wala na, we see it so often. We, we see beggars on the street. We know na, pag dati, abot nga tayo sa kanto, nilalak na natin yung pintuan. Bakit? Eh kasi baka yung ano, magbukas ng pintuan. We see them everywhere. Yung mga nabaha, parang nasa Bulacan, ah, okay na yan. Sige na, kasi ano naman eh, palagi naman sila nababaha eh. Sa Malabon, palagi naman sila, alam na nila yan. We at times are so desensitized. Parang it's part of our life already. Parang it's okay na, let's get it over with. We are so desensitized that we forget what values, what, what are the things that break God's heart. We need to value what God values. Nehemiah's response to his broken heart. In verse 11, he says here, O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of, your, of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. He was saying, give me success. I would do this I would go. I am just a cup bearer. But Lord, give me success. He's saying that without you, God, without you, I won't be able to do this. I'm just a cup bearer. I'm just a cup bearer. But give me success. He knows that success is only in Him. Maybe some of you have heard of this um, starfish story. There was this child. He was walking the beach. Nakita siyang starfish. Alam niya, in a while, mamamatay na yung starfish kasi magkakaroon na ng, uh, magbababa na yung tide. So he got the starfish and threw the starfish. Binato niya. And then, he walked again. May nakita na naman siya ng starfish. Stooped down, got the starfish. Bato siya uli. And then an old guy passed him. Sabi sa kanya, what are you doing? Um, that's, that's the starfish. starfish is gonna die. So I'm just picking one starfish at a time and then threw it back to the ocean so that he won't die. Sabi ng lalaki, the old guy, are you out of your mind? 
Look there. There are thousands of starfish. How can you do that in time that, they are, that all of them are alive? Sabi ng small boy. It's, it's a boy. He just said, I don't know, but I'll just do this one at a time. Pick up one again. This one. I'm saying this one. Pick up one again. This one. You know what the old guy did? The old guy started stooping down. Got one starfish. Pick up again one starfish. One at a time. And then before long, may isang may beach house doon. Sabi, ano ba ginagawa ng dalawa? Nakabay na ako, Lars. Went there. What are you doing? Told them the story. Now there were four of them. One starfish at a time. It should not stop there. Each one of us should have that starfish. One of our real-life scholars, you know, I really applaud our real-life um, real team. They started with only 20 or 30, I'm not so sure, but so few scholars. Now they're up to 600. Yung isa, she wanted to stop schooling kasi sabi ng dad niya, wala na, kami, wala na, kami, wala na silang pera. They only earn, as a family, 5,000 peso. 5,000 peso a month for a family of five. Divide it. It's easy. 1,000 a month for per person. That's not even enough. So she has to stop schooling. And it just so happened that the pastor got, na, na, nalaman yung, ano niya, yung story niya. Lumapit sa real life. And guess what? That person right now is earning 50,000 peso every month. Nabago yung buhay nila. That's one starfish at a time. What to do now? What actions to take now? Even that Sampagida vendor that always tap on your window, that's one starfish at a time.